Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Cret, and about 10 minutes ago, Dry Bear released the Season 2 PTS Number 3 patch notes. I haven't read these. So these are my first thoughts, uncut, you know, no, no second take or anything. So, continue the changes in the last PTS with further item balance. There's still more changes to be made. Um, so, there's probably going to be PTS 4. Uh, fantastic feedback. Cool. Gameplay changes are documented in these notes. Um, maybe undocumented features, and the changes are guaranteed to make it alive. Okay. So, refinements, improved collision paths, that's good. Player spawn locations, that's cool. Correct god icons and pantheon flags, that's really cool. Um, more critters and performance. Gamma slider, auto optimize, minimum to maximum. Okay. Camps. Attack speed adds 50 magic power from basic attacks and 12 physical power from basic attacks. So this got a buff. Um, so that's an interesting thing. The 15% attack speed buff is now very, very good early on. And that's going to help Hunter clear. Um, we're not correctly... Okay, so the leash is going to apply quicker. It won't do like the one second reset thing that it used to do. Uh, mid harpy camps do not spawn at the start of the game, so it's more about buff camps than early on. And tagging time is reduced. They still want zoning to be a thing. So, uh, PTS 1 had very strong zoning mechanics. PTS 2 reverted the majority of those. PTS 3 powering up zoning again, and they're trying to find a balance. Achilles Spear provides more attack speed and movement speed. Alright, so, and it branches off the sprint. That's good. Um, so this is a good change because the previous version of Achilles Spear just straight up was not good, right? Like, here's the PTS2 changes. Uh, Achilles Spear, here it is. You get 25% attack speed and 35% lifesteal. So the lifesteal is fine, but the attack speed in the vast majority of cases is going to be like a 20%, 15% bonus damage, right? Like, it's going to increase your damage by 15 to 20% because of the diminishing efficiency on attack speed. As a result, uh, the 30% damage taken was generally stronger than the 25% attack speed. So this balances it out, and the move speed's nice, too. It doesn't look like you're slow, man. Blood Forge, cheaper. Um, less stacks. There were too many stacks and less life steal, uh, less life steal per stack. So it's it's now 15% and then it goes up to 21% life steal. Um, so basically Blood Forge is now an alternative to Dower's Gloves, whereas before it didn't really have a place, right? Like, if you look at Warlock Sash and Thrill Staff, there's a nice balance there. Warlock Sash has more magic power, same amount of health, and Ethereal Staff has less magic power, same amount of health, but it's fully stacked the moment you buy it. Blood Forge is going to be now closer to that. Bluestone Pendant, stronger early game. That's fine. Uh, Charge Bow is no longer RNG. It's now every fourth hit. This adds... Oh, um, this is the second rank of the item. So that's interesting. It's got less attack speed and it's cheaper. So potentially a starting item for some hunters. Giving you about 300 gold. You can get an active, get some pots, whatever. Um, interesting to see it lose the RNG, now it's every fourth hit. This adds a level of skill for players that are counting their hits, right? So you go like, one, two, three, four, that's gonna chain lightning, so you wanna hit a creep where it'll bounce to enemy gods or whatever. Um, so that's interesting. Charged Hammer, that is, I believe, Transcendence. Um, let's see. Charged Morning Star. I think that's probably an error. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a typo. I think they probably mean charged morning star. Um, basically, just tier two, of the item's gonna have MP5. Dust Toll gets less mana and more health, so that's an interesting point of balance. Uh, Fist of the Gods is back on Hog. It's now on, you know, like Hog 3 and Fist. Um,. Greater pur Purification. Okay, so they completely reverted it and then just nerfed the cooldown reduction. I guess they didn't feel that the 5 second cooldown reduction would ever not be good. There's no way to make it not good. Like, it would just always be the best option. Um, this is just fixing bugs. This is fixing bugs. 
So this is the new healer item. Um, it's protect all instead of just physical protection, and it's a little bit cheaper. Mannequin Scepter, out of the game, it was too strong. Magi's Blessing, remove crowd control reduction. Okay, so what this does is Magi's Blessing gave a lot of stats on live. Gives a lot of stats on live. Live hasn't changed, so here it is. You gain 15 protect all, 350 health, so that's already good. It gives you the bubble, absorbs a single hard crowd control root effect once every 45 seconds. I guess that's above me. Um, and it gives you, so it's got the bubble, which is great. Uh, and then it's got crowd control reduction. By removing that, it opens up a host of items that have resolve, which is primarily on reinforced greaves, and it's on Anubis passive. So reinforced greaves are now tank boots, they got some slight changes. Um, but basically, it just means that, like, Magi's Blessing no longer replaces Resolve. It makes tank boots more of a thing, because now they give you something that you don't want. Um, Ninja Tabi now have less physical power and give attack speed. Uh, no cooldown reduction. So we'll see what the other changes to boots are. Uh, Odysseus Bow, no longer random, cheaper. This is big, because now that it's not RNG... Um, and it's every fourth hit, so if you miss, you still get it in the chamber, right? It doesn't doesn't look like it triggers until you hit. Um, it's a lot more reliable. Odysseus Bow, in its current incarnation on live, in its current incarnation on PTS, or past incarnation, and on this, was a very good damage item, right? Think of it like Deathbringer. Deathbringer gives you 50 physical power, so it doesn't have that. What it does have is a flat 25%, which is larger than Deathbringer by itself to do 300% damage in a crit. Um, and so what that means is... Uh, what that means is that the 300% damage crit... Like, Deathmringer is a 250% damage crit. Death, uh, Odysseus is a 300% damage crit because it bounces four times, or it bounces three times and hits four. So, like, you hit your target, that's an extra 50% damage. So you're doing 150% damage on your first hit. Then it bounces. That's another 50. Now it's 200, 250, 300. It's really, really high DPS. It gives you attack speed, which is very valuable and is comparable to the 50 power on Deathbringer in late game. So Odysseus Bow is now super cheap and super good. I expect to see this in 100 builds. Um, Polynomicon bug fixed. Runic Shield is just anti-magical. It doesn't affect attack speed anymore. So that's interesting. Less magical protection, though. It's probably too strong. Uh, Shoes the Magi now have more magic power. So there could be reason to purchase them now. Um, Shoes of Focus, I believe, will still be very strong. So Shoes of Focus have 30 magic power, 50% cooldown reduction. This adds 35 magic power. So Shoes of the Magi now have a 35 magic power boost over Shoes of Focus. That makes them pretty good. Uh, Spirit Robe was too strong. Now it's less strong. Soulstone, they couldn't make it work. Sovereignty, better tank item. Um, so it's it's just going to be better to rush after boots. Or get out after boots. Temporal Purification on the game. Transcends as MP5. Warlock Sash buffed. Watcher's Gift. Um, passive has changed, being within range 60 of a minion death without dealing a killing blow. Okay, so it's a l much larger range, which means that, uh, oh, and it gives mana now. I, well, I don't know if the range is larger, but it does give mana, so a little bit more region on that item. Per wave, it's going to be 60 health and 30 mana. Per minute, that's 120 health and 60 mana, so it's very good. Um, in terms of region, but you can't get zoned out, or it doesn't do anything. Witchblade, no longer is move speed. No longer replacing boots. Still probably a good item, um, but it's just useful in less characters. Like, the Witchblade had two weird stats on it. It had attack speed and it had movement speed. They elected to remove the movement speed, which means that now it's a physical defense item with attack speed and a really strong aura. And there just aren't as many characters that really will get the uh, get use out of that 15% attack speed, but you'll likely still see it on a character building chin size. So, you know, Witchblade, probably still good. Warrior Tabi has no attack speed on it now. It's just raw damage boots. So, you're getting 40 physical power, 
And then Ninja Tabi is giving 15% attack speed. So in if you're a real auto attacker, you're going to want the 15% attack speed over the 20 physical power. Um, if you're a ability user, you're probably going to want the extra 20 physical power. It's not as strong as Warrior Tabi were on live, but it still should be pretty good. Um, we have some base value buffs. And so these buffs might look like large numbers. This is not what matters. This is what matters. Because your attack speed scales off of the base value, this is a very large buff, right? Like, it might not seem like that much, but this value is based on this value. Um, the 15% attack speed on chin size comes out of this. So even though it's like 0.03, um, it's pretty big. Stop time, not reducing enemy attack speed. Apparently it was supposed to. Um, that's an interesting bug fix. So hunters overall are having higher base attack speed, um, which is going to make them stronger with attack speed items and also make them cap out a little bit quicker in terms of attack speed. So now two, uh, two items and boots is probably like the cap. You wouldn't want more than that. And hunters with an attack speed steroid likely can get by with one attack speed item and boots and be really efficient off of that. Um, Kokokin is um, bug fix. Um, oh yeah, so this is a big fix. Osiris... Um, judgment Tether, reduced damage. And by, like, as a fact of reducing damage, it also happened to reduce your healing and mana regen. Like, so reducing damage is like, okay, I'm a character that does damage. I do 200 damage every time I auto attack. Osiris said, all right, the amount of numbers you put out is going to be reduced by 40%. Now you only do... What is that? 120 damage. It also just so happened to affect your healing and mana regen. So if you meditate with Judgment Tether on you on live right now, you get less mana back. 40% less mana if Judgment Tether is like up to that point. Rip DM Brandon. Um, but it, overall, like the mana regen thing wasn't super consequential. The healing was. It meant that Osiris had two anti-heal abilities, which is part of what made him very strong in competitive play. Uh, Rama... Base value is much like every other hunter. This is a huge buff. So Shibalanke just got a lot more auto attack damage. And so an interesting uh, misconception about Shibalanke that I am going to pull up a website to show you is about his DPS. So if you look at hunters, um, and let's do a standard crit build. Here we go. If you look at Hunters, this is a list of Hunters DPS, um, courtesy of Andrew Baldock, who posted this on Reddit a while ago. This is Hunter DPS during their steroid, right? So Shibalanki has his Branching Bola, and um, so Shibalanki has his Branching Bola, and uh, this, yeah, he has his Branching Bola and his passive fully activated, and he's doing 857 DPS with... Warriors, Hobby, Devil Gauntlet, Rage, Deathbringer, Executioner, Titan's Pain. Make, make no, like, don't worry about the order. He's doing 857 DPS. Whereas Cupid, or let's go with um, On Her, is doing 768, right? Or like Artemis is doing 1088. Yeah, looking at the high damage hunters, so Artemis with 1088, Rom with 1027, Ul with uh, 1008 are just doing significantly more DPS than Shibalanki because he doesn't have an attack speed steroid and he doesn't have particularly high base attack speed. So while he is hitting very, very hard in relation to them, he's not actually doing as much damage. This base attack speed buff is going to significantly increase Shibalanki's damage. So let's say Shibalanki had a bonus 100% lifesteal, right? or 100% attack speed. He would go from 1.76 to two. Oh, that wasn't supposed to multiply. Two, bam. So the difference is a 13, 14% damage bonus. Shibalanki a lot stronger now in terms of the actual damage that he deals. 
Rip Arena. Um, okay, so changes overall this patch. Um, hopefully we'll see Hunters back in the dual lane. This attack speed buff is very strong for them. Might not happen, but Hunters should be stronger in the early game. Um, Mannequins is removed, so that's a lot of bullying potential out of the game. Um, Sylvanas got a little bit of a clear nerf. It might not have been a enough. His wisps now only affect gods. Actually, wait, no, it doesn't do damage to enemy, enemy minions either. So Sylvanas gets a big clear nerf. And that's important because Sylvanas was just too good in the duo lane on the PTS, right? He was like the best clear and it, it was really scary. So hopefully this will see more hunters in the duo lane. They've got a huge DPS buff because of all these changes um and and the itemization changes should benefit them to odysseus bow a lot stronger so just off the top of my head not not doing really too much testing my go-to hunter build would be something like um death's toll which also is pro uh, provides more sustain so that's strong death's toll devil gauntlet warrior to or not warrior tabi on some characters, maybe, but usually Ninja Tabi into Executioner, Rage, Deathbringer, Odysseus Bow. If you're a character with an attack speed steroid, you'd want Warrior Tabi, so you just have a little bit less attack speed, which makes your uh, steroid more valuable. That's just sort of off the top of my head, but it should be pretty good. That last item, Odysseus Bow, is going to be very powerful. Um, those are my thoughts on the PTS. I hope you guys have fun this weekend. Um, just looking at the classes in general, I don't feel like we're going to see too many changes to what's happening to mages. Um, well, okay, so there will be, like, meta changes, right? Like, warriors aren't as strong early. So, and hopefully they'll be stronger late. That probably will still need balancing because their penetration equilibrium is still out of whack. Um... But, oh, also Bloodforge is now a fairly good option for Hunters if you don't want to rush Devil Gauntlet. So, Bloodforge is a much better item. This is a big buff to Mercury as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the equilibrium of the game will have changed. It's really hard to say what the wide-reaching consequences will be just because of how MOBAs work. Um, but... We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the PTS this weekend. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe down below. You can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash critito with a T-U-H, T-U-H. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.